In our last problem, we have an, an additional interesting facet with this one in that we're throwing something at an angle from a cliff. So even after it goes out, it has some distance to fall. So in our Y information, we need to realize that it's going to be landing, uh, in this case, 21 meters below our starting point. So it's negative 21. Um, our upward initial velocity is going to be the Y component. So we can use a familiar equation. So to do this, only now it's going to turn into a quadratic because you have both term of t and t squared. So you can use whatever method you use to solve quadratics. I just go right for the quadratic formula usually, and I actually wrote a little computer program in Excel that does that for me. So once I write the equation out, I'm going to sneak away to my desk and punch the values into Excel. So it's going to give me my the times uh, that would be needed. But when you use the quadratic equation, you have to have it in standard form, you know, with your square term first, then your non-square term. Uh, this gives us our roots. Uh, they kind of flew by there in a hurry. One won't make sense. It's actually the time it would take to go backwards. So we can use that time, the time that makes sense, the positive time, uh, for the x direction, knowing that the x velocity will not change. It's going to be constant in the x direction. Then we can use that time with our horizontal velocity to find the range.